Hi, this is Dan Brunton with the Intel Corporation, and in this video, I'll be going over the process of configuring your first Intel Endpoint Management Assistant tenant. Let's start out with talking about the, the tenant setup process. There's a couple of things you'll need to do to uh, get yourself going. Uh, the first is you'll need to create some configurations uh, for AMT, if you want to use out-of-band management, as well as for uh, creating new endpoint groups to go through and manage your devices, and we'll talk to you about optional uh, enablement of AMT auto configuration. And once you've got your configuration profiles built, now it's time to deploy them using the Intel Emma agent so you can go through and start managing your devices. And we'll go over that process as well. Let's just start out with some high-level stuff. First of all, you want to create Intel AMT configurations. As we discussed before, you have the option of configuring AMT in Sierra or TLS mode, as well as dialing in all the settings that you want to make sure that AMT works the way you need it to in your environment. We'll go into more detail on what this looks like in the demo in this video. Another uh, idea to understand when you're managing a, an Intel tenant is device groups or endpoint groups. Uh, endpoint groups allow you to go through and collect together the computers you're managing into some type of logical hierarchy. That could be by physical location, by uh, groups such as, you know, here's the finance computers, here's the HR computers. You know, however you'd like to organize them, we provide that, uh, that hierarchy here with endpoint groups. Uh, and this is also where you would go through and enable uh, in-band management features for the Intel Emma agents. So if you wanted to turn the you know, user consent on or off or even completely disable uh, remote KVM control of a system, this is where you go through and, and define that policy for that in-band agent. Now that we have an Intel AMT configuration profile built and an endpoint group, you do have the option of uh, setting that endpoint group to automatically configure AMT anytime a new device is uh, registered inside that endpoint group when it gets the Emma agent installed on it. First, check off the enabled box. Uh, choose the Intel AMT profile from the dropdown that you like to use. Choose your activation method, and that can be either uh, host-based or uh, certificate-based. Uh, after you do that, you'll need to enter your administrator password. And if you've chosen to do uh, certificate provisioning, you'll see another option come up to randomize the Intel MEBX password. Uh, so what that really means is that uh, AMT devices all support some type of pre-boot uh, environment where if I'm having problems with my laptop or my desktop, while it's booting up, I'll have the option of going into the Management Engine BIOS extensions. And that's just basically a, kind of a diagnostic screen for AMT that, amongst a few things, lets you manually unconfigure AMT if you're having a problem. So if you're going to provision a system with certificate provisioning, you do get the option of randomizing that password. And in a production environment, we recommend that to help better harden uh, systems from physical attack. If a person is to get a hold of the system, they won't be able to get into the management engine BIOS extensions and change around any of the AMT configuration. Uh, however, if you are working in a lab environment uh, where you think you want to go through and do a lot of testing and may possibly break things and don't want to have to go to the trouble of looking up a random password from the Intel MS server, you do have the option of uh, not randomizing that password. But again, that's not recommended for production environments. That's something that's only acceptable in, in test environments or labs. And finally, if you are going to provision with certificate provisioning, you'll see the option at the very bottom, uh, certificate details, where you can pick the provisioning certificate that you would like to use. So I'd like to take a moment to talk about those two provisioning modes that I mentioned in the last slide. Again, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about them, but I want to cover some high-level things to keep in mind as you decide how you want to manage the configuration of Intel Active Management Technology. So we support host-based provisioning, also known as client control mode, or certificate provisioning, also known as admin control mode. Host-based provisioning is the easiest option to go with. You don't have to have any provisioning certificates to use it. It works great across the internet without any additional client or network configuration. Uh, but the one consideration to take in mind is user consent. So if you're going to do boot redirection, you're going to boot into BIOS, or do KVM remote control, it's required that you obtain user consent, and that's an automated process with Intel AMT, uh, from the end user before you can do these things. Now with certificate provisioning, or admin control mode, as you sometimes hear it referred to, you have to obtain a provisioning certificate before you can use this mode. So the big difference here is that certificate is used then to help authenticate that the system is being activated by an authorized party. The benefit you get when you do certificate provisioning or admin control mode is user consent becomes optional at that point. Uh, you can go through and turn it on and off as needed, so if uh, you want to work on a system where a person's not present at the time and don't want to wait for them to come back, you do have the option of being able to turn off that user consent requirement remotely or just leave it off entirely if that's what you prefer. 
So now that we have all of our configurations built and we have everything set to automatically configure AMT the way we want, let's talk about making that happen. And that's done by deploying the Intel Emma agent. So when you go to the agent installation uh, files page, you're going to see a few options to choose from here. You'll see uh, an option for choosing uh, the version of the agent you want. Uh, you'll see options for service and console versions. Uh, the service version is the most common to use. Uh, we have the console version there strictly for debugging purposes only. So once you've downloaded the appropriate uh, Windows service version of the, the Intel Emma agent for your architecture, you also need to download the policy file. And that policy file so it has all the unique settings that defines you know, which endpoint group the device should go in so that it knows how to configure AMT, how to uh, configure how that device works. So you download those two files together. You'll download the appropriate service version for your architecture, 32 or 64 bit. You download the agent policy file. And once you have the two of them together on the system, you run the uh, service installer as an administrator. It'll read that policy file and see how to configure the device and go through and register it with the Intel Emma server. With that, let's go through a demo of uh, the tenant configurations. Let's take a look at the process of configuring a new tenant in Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. I've already got my credentials here, so I'm going to log in. And the first time you log into a new tenant, you're brought to this overview screen where you can go through and begin setting up the various profiles you need to uh, get your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant environment up and running to manage devices. I'm going to deviate a little bit from what you see here is the flow and just kind of step through the way I prefer to set it up. First thing I want to do in my case is I want to be able to do admin control mode provisioning or certificate-based provisioning of Intel AMT. So I'm going to upload a provisioning certificate. I'll choose the file. I'll give it a friendly name. And the password needed to decrypt the file to upload it. I also want to make sure that I leave the PKI certificate box checked here at the top of the screen. Now that that's done, I can hit upload. And we'll see that my new PKI provisioning certificate has been added into the system here. With that, let's go back to the overview screen. And what I like to do is actually start by creating a new Intel AMT profile first. So we're going to go ahead and click on that option and choose new AMT profile here on the screen. And we'll start out by figuring out the options we want to use. So first, we have the option of choosing either a TLS security profile or one that uses uh, client-initiated remote access. In this case, we're going to stick with the default option of client-initiated remote access. We'll give the profile a name and a description. And then we'll step through the different options we have. For power states, I'm going to leave the default option selected. I'll choose the management interfaces I want to enable for this particular profile. In this case, all of them. I'll leave FQDN source at the default of shared with the host OS. Likewise, I'll leave the IP address option as from the DHCP server. And in this particular demo, I'm going to skip over the Wi-Fi and wired 802NX profile combinations just to save some time. Now that that's done, I can go down here and hit my save button and I see my new AMT configuration profile here on the screen. I'm going to go to the Endpoint Groups tab, and I'm going to create a new profile there next. I'll choose the new Endpoint Group option. Go give the group a name. I'm just going to keep it the same as my AMT profile for simplicity's sake. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the screen and choose the policy options I want to enable. So very similar to what I did with the AMT profile, I'm going to go ahead and select all the options here. And I'm also going to turn off the user consent option. Again, this is just a demo environment where I'm not concerned about user consent for everything. Now that that's done, I'm going to go up to the top of the page here and say Save and Intel AMT Auto Setup. Now this is an optional setup that you can do in your environment if you want to be able to automatically configure Intel Active Management Technology whenever a new device is reported into the MS server. In my case, I'd like to use this, so I'm going to go ahead and check the enabled box. I've only got the one AMT profile now, so that's all that shows up in this dropdown. For activation method, because I've uploaded a certificate, I have the option of choosing certificate provisioning. I'm going to choose that. 
Now I'm going to set the administrator password that will be used to communicate with AMT on my devices. Now this is a simple password for demo purposes, but we always recommend that you set a complex password for this following your industry best practices or IT requirements. And we also have another option that appears when we choose the certificate provisioning or admin control mode. And that's the ability to set a random password for the MEBX configuration. Uh, the MEBX, again, is a, uh, a BIOS screen that you can enter to configure AMT or to turn it off. Uh, in production environments, we always recommend sending a random password. And we provide a way to pull that password out of the database if you do need to get into the MEBX locally on the system. However, in my environment, I'm doing a lot of testing, so I'm going to choose the do not set the password option, and that leaves the password at the default value. And then here I have the ability to choose my AMT provisioning certificate. Again, because I'm doing certificate provisioning in admin control mode, I have to choose a cert. We only have the one option, so we'll just leave that default. I'll scroll down and hit save. And we're just about ready to go. So from the endpoint group screen, we can come over here to the create agent files option. Uh, from the uh, drop-down menu here with the three dots. And that takes us to a screen where we can go through and select the uh, appropriate Windows service and the agent policy file. So you choose the service you want, click download, likewise to get your agent policy profile. I've already gone ahead and downloaded these on a, a test client in my lab, and we're going to go ahead and go to that now and show you what the installation of the agent looks like. Okay, here's my client device I'll be installing the Intel Emma agent on. Go ahead and uh, right-click on that agent and choose to run as administrator so it installs correctly. We'll say yes at the prompt. And then we see the installation screen come up. Again, it's very simple. We can validate the, uh, the policy we'll be using or the endpoint group as remote workers. That's correct. Now that we've verified that, we'll hit the install button. All right, the, the screen's disappeared. The installation is complete, and we're ready to go back to our admin console and see the new system that's shown up. All right, we've come back to our endpoint screen, and we can see the device that we just installed the agent on has appeared in the remote workers endpoint group, and that it's connected, and the AMT status is not provisioned, and that should kick into the provisions test in just a moment after it completes that process on the back end. This concludes our demo of the Emma tenant configuration and agent installation process. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to talking to you more about this.